Can Jimmy eat seven bags of gummy bears in less than seven minutes? No. No? Okay, well, but he can probably talk about weed for about seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, man, I, I have a lot of friends who have different opinions about um, weed and, and whether they should or, or shouldn't smoke it, and they have their various own opinions. And I mean, I've, I've dove in on the conversation just every time I felt maybe comfortable. But, um, you know, I'm wondering how you would speak to that to that conversation, how maybe right. you would you would approach it. Yeah. Um, so. All right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I feel right. like there's no better setup. So I'm just. <laughs> okay. I really am just curious. Like, you know, it's, yeah. it's a big deal. And sure. And, um, you know, I think that a lot of these conversations are a big deal as far as like what is okay, what isn't. And right. so when it comes to weed, it's a big conversation, especially within our state. So, yeah. Yeah. um, so I'll set the timer and okay. I'll let you have at it. All right. <laughs> All right. Go for it. Well, I think the, you know, I think there are a lot of people asking the question, is it okay to participate whether smoking or chewables or even medical marijuana? Yeah. And, uh, I think the, the fact that it's a renewed conversation is stimulated by the fact that it's legal in our state. Mm. So then the question theoretically is, if something's legal, is it okay for me to do it? Yeah. And um, so the first thing, so I will never say yes or no to the question because I what I really want is for people to, to think. Uh, the scripture says we should work out our salvation with fear and trembling before God because mm. he's at work in us to both desire and do his good will. So I would challenge people not to blindly say, yes, you can, or blindly say, no, you can't, but to think through why. So um, first of all, the legal question, you know, it is legal in our state, but it's not legal in our country. Mm. So we still have a legal battle. That's probably going to be resolved and probably in the next two to three years, the Fed will remove that law. But right now it's illegal uh, in the federal government. Our country views it as an illegal act to take marijuana mm. in whatever form. Our state happens to say it's legal. Colorado says it's legal, but the Fed says it's not. So whatever that's worth, that's still something to think about. Yeah. Then my mind goes to, you know, uh, why do you want to do that? Like, what's the win? Some people would say, well, it, it, uh, I like it. Yeah. I just like it. And is it okay to just do stuff because I like it? And okay, you just like it. Some people say, well, I, I, I like how it makes me feel. Or it really helps me blank. It yeah. helps me calm down. Yeah. It helps me relax. It helps me stop stressing. Well, then you want to think about, uh, is that, a, is that, a, um, is that a, an approach that by faith you would take rather than saying, Lord, I want you to calm me down. Uh, Lord, you help me stay calm. So there's a question there. I go to two passages of scripture. Uh, in 1 Corinthians, you know, he talks about, uh, he's talking about eating and drinking, like eating food that's been sacrificed to idols, yeah. and whether there was a debate among Christians. Should we eat meat from the market? If Because in a lot of the, you know, they'd go to the market, and the, and the meat that was sold there was from animals that had been sacrificed to foreign gods. Mm. So there was a debate. No, you shouldn't eat that meat because you know where it's been. People have worshipped, you know, with that. Mm. And Paul said, hey, um, if you give thanks to God for it, eat it, right? So the the debate, he's weighing in on this, you know, what should you eat, What should you, whether you should drink wine or not. There's this whole conversation. And he asked two questions that I think are pertinent. He, he leads with this statement that the, all that, that they were saying. All things are permissible for me. That was the line they were using. Hmm. All things, and, and man, in the scriptures, we have staggering freedom in Christ. Yeah. So that's the first argument is, man, I'm free in Christ. I you know, all things are permissible to me. And Paul would say, yes, they are. Um, but are they beneficial? So the first question he asks is, is there is is this a beneficial thing to do? Is this a contributing thing to do? Yeah. So is it good for you? Is it a, is it a beneficial thing to do? And then the second one, he says, all things are permission to me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Yeah. So then the question of, well, I'm free to do it, but am I free not to do it? Yeah, so good. So I got a lot of uh, preacher friends who um, stand on their freedom to drink alcohol. Sure. And uh, scriptures do not teach abstinence from alcohol. They teach against drunkenness. And there's a lot of warnings about alcohol. Um, and so they say there's no abstinence deal. So uh, I'm free to drink. So I'm going to drink. 
Yeah. And sometimes I ask them, yeah, bro, but are you free not to drink? Yeah. And a lot of them are not. They're so bound up in their freedom that they can't not drink. Wow. The other passage is Romans 14. And in, in Romans 14, he talks about uh, things being done by faith rather than by permission. Yeah. So uh, he would say in Romans 14, if you have a conviction about something and you do it anyway, then that's sin. Mm. So he says, if you think, and back to eating and drinking, he's talking about, if you think eating that meat is wrong, then it's sin for you to eat it because you have a conviction and you're violating your conviction to do that. Mm. So there's a lot of personal conviction that goes into this too. Uh, am I violating my own conviction to do that? Then he talks about causing a brother to stumble. So this is a significant question when you're talking sure. about weed, because in the body of Christ, you know, there's still a lot of... Um, a lot of perspective that this is not something Christians ought to do. Yeah. And so Paul urges us in Romans 14, just because you're free to do something, you should surrender your freedom for the sake of your brother or sister who might stumble because of you participating in your freedom. Mm -hmm. He does say that the ones without freedom have weaker faith. Yeah. It is the weaker Christian who says, I'm not going to eat that meat. I'm not going to participate in that because of my devotion to Christ. He says those with stronger faith have more permissions. So it's an interesting thing. Yeah. You might say, man, my faith, I'm anchored in Christ and I'm so free. I can participate in this because I'm free. I get it with the Lord and this is all good with me. It's a matter of faith. and blah, blah. But you have weaker siblings in the body of Christ for whom that's a real problem. Yeah. And are you willing to forego your freedom for the sake of a weaker brother or sister? Yeah. So those are factors I think I would consider, you know, is it, is it beneficial to me and why? Um, does it master me? Am I free not to do that? And it, does it offend others? I think if you were to survey man on the street and ask people, uh, do Christians do weed? The overwhelming answer would be no, Christians don't do that. Hmm. And so therefore, there's probably a, uh, a legitimate case to be made for um, you're going to participate in something that even pagans would say Christians don't do. Yeah. So maybe the cultural impact of that is worth considering. Yeah. So I think those are all, all factors. Um, I think, too, we spent a lot of time asking questions. When I was a youth pastor, I would get students asking me questions like, how far can I go on a date with my girlfriend before it's sin? Like, yeah. <laughs> can I go to first base, second base? You know, can I touch above the clothes? If I get under the clothes, you know, what can I do before it's sin? And it's really the wrong question. Yeah. So... You know, if you have the guardrails of walking with God, he says, hey, here's the guardrails. I want you to walk this road of righteousness with me. Yeah. Uh, the question shouldn't be, how close can I get to that guardrail before it's a problem? The question ought to be, how, how deeply can I align with God so that I am gaining all of the best from my relationship with Jesus? So, like, how could I glorify him the most? Not, what could I get away with? How carnal can I still, how carnal can I be and still be yeah. a, a Christian? Uh, is the wrong, really the wrong kind of question. So I would factor all that in your decision-making so that you're making a faith-filled decision. And Romans 14, 23 finishes that whole conversation with, if you can't do this as an act of your faith, then don't do it. It's sin. Yeah. And so that would probably be, those would be my guiding principles. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, I because I think about that, it's like, you know, we always want to ask how close to the edge of the cliff can yeah. I get before I'm jumping. Right, right. You know, before I can't blame someone else, before, you know, yeah. and like it's... Yeah, and those are the wrong the wrong questions we should ask, you know, and, and I I don't what I like the most about some of this is that, you know, we're not I don't ever want to be caught telling someone what they should or should not right. do, if that makes sense. Right. Like I you know, I don't wanna be the kind of person who when I look at someone who has their convictions or has their place, but I do wanna look at, like you said, what is the most beneficial. I've made a personal promise to myself to stop shooting on people. Yeah. Because <laughs> when you say you should, man, you should do that or you shouldn't do that, um, it's such an ineffective form of communication right? And, and you're doing all the thinking for them. So I, I'm trying to make a commitment where I don't use that word. Right. You know, and, and, and allow people to, and allow people to walk, walk it out. Like you said, yeah. walk out their own yeah. faith. It's yeah. not, it's not ours. It's theirs. And, and, and I think that's a great encouragement. Um, you know, of course that, you know, when it comes to the advice, I'd say like, you know, there's clear definitions of, you know, God wants us to walk in such a way. Yeah. You know, let's define where that is for each of us. Right. Yeah. Right. It's super. It's great. Yeah. That's good. It's really, really good. So, guys, thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank you so much for watching. 
um, as we as we grow and as as you guys are more attentive to these conversations, uh, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to see if maybe you've got questions or things that maybe you'd like Jim to maybe have a, a, a just approach a little bit with. And uh, if you've got any of those things, or maybe you just want to say, hey, thanks for talking about some of this stuff. It brought some clarity to me. Always feel free to email me at joel at ecconline.cc. And I'd love to hear from you. So thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next week.